they need a ride, if they need Michelle P. Waiver, whatever, we are here to connect the dots to keep those people in their homes as long as possible. That's here in Ohio County. But in Washington, we have ADRPs that are on the ground as we speak to protect my Social Security and my Medicare and to help caregivers across the nation. There are so, if you have not been a caregiver, chances are you will be one during your lifetime. And of course, prescription drugs. We had a win in D.C. last year. Medicare is able to negotiate with pharmaceuticals, pharmaceuticals like VA has been doing for years. Of the 10 that are being negotiated for today, my husband's on four of them. Can you imagine what a financial savings that will be to us if we can get a reduced rate in, in our prescriptions? I want to thank Mr. David Figg and Rice Pharmacy today for sponsoring this meal. Mr. David, would you stand up? Pharmacy is such a help to our county. The delivery service is huge. As most of you know, we live in a very large county. And in, 19, in 2012, Levi Rice saw the need for a pharmacy in Fordsville. How can you have a clinic and not have a pharmacy? So they not only operate the one in Beaver Dam, but they also offer, uh, run the one in Fordsville. Let's give them a big hand for what they do. I want to introduce our uh, new uh, chapter president, Ms. Susie Garrett. Susie, stand up. <laughs> we have so many great chapter people here today that were here last night on a holiday decorating and getting ready for our, our great governor. I'm going to have a few comments by a few people and then we'll start our program. Mr. Lewis, our number one state representative. <laughs> I think she said it because I'm the only state. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'll take it. That's, that's probably the nicest thing anybody will say to me. I'm always honored to be with you all. And, and one of the biggest things that I enjoy during uh, my time in Frankfurt is when you all come and visit. You know, your day that you come visit us in the capital is always special to me. I get to see some people from Ohio County and Hancock County and some different places. And, uh, you know, lots of times we don't we don't get that. We're up there and a 60 day sessions long. Uh, the days are really really long, so it's always nice to see friendly people uh, come to see us. And uh, we did we did have a productive session. And uh, like uh, Charlotte said, we're always trying to do things to better uh, situations for our seniors. That's that's all of our goals, I think. And, uh, we've worked on prescription drugs now. I can't rem remember how ever since I've been up there and, and we have had some wins and uh, The Meals on Wheels. I know we provided extra money and that, that was very important for me and to see that in the budget So we're always looking out for for our seniors our veterans our first responders teachers all these people are so important But you know if we live long enough, we're going to be old All of us hopefully we are we all so you know you, you are very important and you know most of you all have, have done so much in your careers and given so much to our community it's our time to do things for you and and that's that's very important to us and i think i think everybody up here would agree to that but again i'm just so thankful i'm here i always enjoy coming to this event and I, thank you very much Thank you, and it's always a pleasure to be here. I think this is my third time to this event, and I always appreciate the invitation, get a chance to talk to you folks, and uh, certainly echo the sentiments of uh, my colleague, uh, Representative Scott Lewis. You mentioned earlier relationships. I can't tell you how important it is to have a relationship with uh, someone like uh, Representative Lewis over in the House. You think that we're just one of the legislature, but you've got the House, you've got the Senate, and it's two different worlds all together. And it's great comfort to me that all of it, if, if I got an issue that I need to work in the house, I'd go to Scott, and I hope he would feel the same way on my side. It's an exciting time. Now, I'm not gonna steal the governor's thunder. He's gonna tell you a lot of this, but Kentucky, I think, truly is the best position we have ever been in from an economic standpoint. 
That doesn't mean there are dark clouds on the horizon that we're going to have to address, but I think this legislative session was one of the best budgets that we have ever put together in terms of preparing for the future, bringing financial stability, uh, making sure we've got the rainy day fund to handle things like the tornadoes in western Kentucky and the flooding in eastern Kentucky. Life's good for Kentucky. Uh, as I mentioned earlier at uh, the press conference we had where the governor wore some checks, I think in Kentucky is one of the, one of the best kept secrets in the world and people find out about us now. They want to come to Kentucky. They want to be part of Kentucky, and rightfully so. You know, we've always struggled to have the resources we need to, to handle the, the vital programs that uh, every citizen relies on. But where we are right now, because we're creating jobs, which creates new revenue. You don't. We don't have to rely on tax increases, as evidenced by the, um, the cutting per personal uh, income tax. You know, since 1918, we've cut personal income tax by 33 percent. That doesn't mean a lot to some people, but for working families, that's over $1,100 each and every year put it back in their pocket based on the median income. Our goal is to get to, to, to zero, do the math, over $3,300 a year for the average working family. And by doing that, we grow our economy, brings new jobs to Kentucky, grow our population. That's why I say again, the future never looked brighter for Kentucky, I'm very proud of it. And uh, again, to echo Scott's uh, her comments about we look out for you folks. We truly do. I'm hoping this next legislative session uh, I can uh, file a, a bill that's filed this last session but didn't get a lot of attention, but help reduce uh, prescription drug costs as well. Also disappointed that Senate Bill 23, which dealt with capping uh, uh, property taxes for seniors over 65, uh, made it through the Senate, didn't make it through the House, so we'll give that another charge. But believe me, we understand the challenges that, that you folks face, that we all face, working families face, and looking forward to a very bright future in Kentucky. Always appreciate the opportunity to be here. Thank you. God bless you. Um, now I'm going to bring our new um, ARP executive director up, Troy. He comes from New Orleans, and we're just glad to have him in Ohio County today. That's right. Thank you, Charlotte. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you for allowing me to be here. Charlotte said I had a uh, about two hours to speak, and I really appreciate that. <laughs> That's a joke, because I've used this joke here before with, with you guys last time. No, very excited to be here. You know, I want to I want to thank Ohio County for really this chapter for being so integral in all the work that we do here with AARP. Really fighting, you know, fighting for caregivers, protecting Social Security, and making sure that it's here for you when you need it the most. So I don't want to take up too much too much time, but I want to tell you. I can, as I travel around the Commonwealth, what I've found through these 120 counties that I've been trying to get to, uh, what I've found is that a, a sincere love that each of you have for Kentucky. And I want each of you to understand that as a Louisiana guy here, uh, I'm falling in love with Kentucky each and every day. So thank you for allowing me to be here. And I found it uh, without any, any, any travel <laughs> issues driving in today from Louisville. So thank you all. Charlotte, you're awesome. Ohio County is great. You know, appreciate this chapter, and I look forward to being here a whole lot longer and working with each and every one of you. So, thank you for your time, and I'd like to say where I come from, uh, uh, let's enjoy this joie de vie, this joy of life, and that's what it's all about. Life is to be joy, and life is to be lived longer, and we have perfect testaments of that here with everyone here today. So, thank you all. Thank you, Charlotte. program now. I'm going to ask Dr. Armstrong to come up and do our blessing on our program today. Then I'm going to ask our judge executive to lead the pledge to the legions. And then Chris Joslin. Chris is the executive director of the International Bluegrass Museum in Owensboro. He's not only my friend, but he's one of the most talented people I've ever known. So we appreciate Chris and his friend coming today to help us. And Dr. Armstrong, you're on. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Charlotte. And it is so good to be here in the presence of so many wise and mature people. Um, the wisdom that comes with age, it is good. Would you bow with me as we pray together? Our Father, we love you. We praise you. And we thank you for every expression of mercy and grace we have received from your hand. You are indeed our refuge, our strength, a very present help in times of trouble. 
We thank you, Lord, for your presence and the safety we enjoyed during the storms of last weekend. But while celebrating our own good fortune, Lord, let us not forget those whose homes were destroyed, and especially those five families who lost loved ones. Lord, we pray that you would wrap your arms of love around them, give them strength to rebuild and go on. May they be emotionally and spiritually strengthened by the love and physical help of people from all over our commonwealth who will go to their aid, people who will be Jesus to them in their time of trouble. Lord, we thank you for our governor, who has been to us a calming, encouraging, and unifying presence through the calamities of the last several years, the pandemic, the storms, the floods that have rocked our commonwealth. Thank you, Lord, for his compassionate leadership. Thank you for his frequently delivered reminder that we are stronger together than we are apart, that we are indeed a team and together we will prevail. Lord, we pray that you would give Governor Monsieur strength and wisdom as he leads our commonwealth into the future. His is not an easy job. May he and all of our elected leaders be guided <clears throat> in all of the decisions they make by what is best for the people of our state rather than what is politically expedient. Lord, thank you for this time together with friends and neighbors. May you be included in our conversations and in our fellowship today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Would you stand with me as we pledge allegiance to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. stand for the national anthem as well. Thank you. destination for bluegrass music so what a joy to to uh, to have this partnership with 
Ohio County. And uh, as people really travel, not just from around the region or the state or the country, but literally from around the world to experience bluegrass music right here at the home of bluegrass music, which is Kentucky. And uh, so um, I wanted to take advantage of having, um, having Aaron Rouse here with me to lead us all and feel free. In fact, maybe we should go ahead and stand as we do a somewhat up tempo bluegrass version of my old Kentucky home. <laughs> you putting me right after that um, yes. <laughs> and then you gave me the easiest task of all you've asked me to introduce the guy that everybody already knows so pretty simple no I do appreciate the invitation I appreciate the time to be here uh, such a beautiful day after all the storms we've had uh, and I thank you for inviting us Rice's Pharmacy and AARP we've been great partners for many years uh, just know that we're always here we're always here whether it's for prescriptions uh, medical equipment or even Medicare plans uh, we're here to help okay we're here for Ohio County but isn't that what Ohio County is about just this morning I had a lady come into the pharmacy and uh, she asked to to uh, for some help for somebody she had heard about a patient uh, a gentleman that had had an amputation and he needed a medical device and she knew that he didn't he wasn't able to afford that and so she came in and uh, asked to pay for that for this gentleman. These are the acts of kindness. These are acts of kindness that I get the pleasure of seeing every day. These are the acts of kindness and caring that we need our leaders to promote and foster. And we certainly have that here today. Not negativity, not divisiveness. So it's a privilege to introduce one of those leaders. 
He does an amazing job at bringing the best out of everyone. He brings our Commonwealth together with a vision and a plan. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce our Governor, Andy Bashir. Thank you all. David, to you and Meredith, thank you for your friendship. Thank you for that introduction. And Charlotte, thanks for being there with me probably about these last 12 years. Thanks for being on this journey with me. Doesn't she do a great job? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I want to thank uh, your state senator and, and representative. Uh, senator Meredith and I worked on a couple uh, bills uh, directly in this session. You know what? Every educator or retired educator we can send to Frankfurt will help us do a better job. Thank you for your time as a superintendent as well. And thank you for that prayer. Uh, today, I'm mainly going to talk about issues that impact AARP and what's going on in our state. But after what we went through this weekend, we do have to acknowledge that we have been through yet another difficult natural disaster. Uh, it, it's, it's hard to have perspective about them after December of 2021, seeing something of a magnitude we had never seen before and most of the country will never see. But what came through on Sunday night uh, took five of our fellow Kentuckians. Those are five children of God whose families are missing them today that are irreplaceable to their communities. In addition, it hit some areas really hard. Yesterday I was in both Hopkins and Muhlenberg counties to, to visit some of those areas. Uh, two of them are just north of Dawson Springs, where my family comes from, where we lost 70% of every home in that December 2021 tornado. Uh, one is a little community called Charleston. As you get off on the exit, you know, depending on if you go towards the subway, you're going towards Dawson Springs. If you take the, the, the other direction in about a mile and a half, you're in Charleston. Uh, they got hit by what is at least an EF3 tornado. We're lucky thus far we've only lost one individual, but what you see in, in that town um, would have resembled what we saw in some other areas had it hit a place more populated. And then I went to Barnsley. Uh, Barnsley got hit in the 2021 tornadoes too. The same corner that was leveled in December of 2021 was leveled on Sunday night. One of the same homeowners lost their home for the second straight time, and I know you've got a member of your community that lost their home in those tornadoes and has since, I believe, lost it to a lightning strike. That means that we've got to be there for our people. No matter how many storms we go through, no matter how many natural disasters happen, even if it's not as big as the tornadoes of 2021 or the floods of 2022, it means we've got to pour out our love and our support each and every time because those five families that are suffering today deserve our love and support as much as every one of those from the disasters in the past. But what I was already seeing is what we all saw and what you did after those tornadoes. You came together to help your fellow human being. You lived out that golden rule that we love our neighbor as ourselves. And the parable of the Good Samaritan says everybody's our neighbor. And so I was already talking to people that had people in their yard helping them they had never met before that had come to a place where they knew people needed help. And I saw homeowners whose homes were leveled, helping their neighbor first before they got to their own. Now, Kentucky is filled with special people. And I know what we will do after these storms is the same thing we do every time we face adversity. We rally together. No Democrat, no Republican, no red or blue, just Kentuckians, Americans, and people of God wanting to help one another to make it through it. It's also really exciting to be back in Ohio County. I was talking with the judge. I think I've been here so much we can't count the number of times. That's a good thing. It's a good thing for me uh, to be with such fine people that many times. But it also says you have so much going on. Today we were able to present a couple of really great awards. The first was a little over $500,000 to what's called the KPDI program, which I think is a huge bipartisan success of both the General Assembly uh, the executive branch, economic development, and the rest. What that's doing is going into two business industrial parks that are here to make sure that you have every advantage to get that next 
uh, round of jobs. Jason, you're doing a great job. Thank you for your work. <laughs> what Jason will tell you is right now we're winning. And I'm going to talk a little bit about how much we're winning. We're beating virtually every other state in the country, creating opportunities for our kids and our grandkids and our great grandkids. And at this time of great investment, we want to soak up as much of it as possible. And that means we can't be complacent. We got to put in the work. Now, right now, we're building the two largest battery plants on planet Earth in Glendale. No one's ever done anything to this scale. And we're doing it in Kentucky. But it didn't happen overnight. That site that we're doing it on, we invested over decades. And you all deserve that same success here in Ohio County and across all of Western Kentucky. And that's what this program's about. Making sure we're not shovel ready, we're build ready. That we can tell everybody that we will beat them in speed to market. And if you pick us, if you pick Kentucky, if you pick our, work, our working people, if you pay good wages, we will get you up and running faster than anywhere else. And I know everyone in this room joins me. And what we really want to do is leave this Commonwealth and this country a better place than we found it. This is one great investment opportunity that 500,000 came to, to this county today that's going to help create those next jobs of the future. The other thing we did is invest in your parks including right here in Hartford, uh, Mayor, uh, in, in Ellis Park, yes. where we're going to resurface the basketball court, yes, where we're going to redo the baseball diamond. Uh, Dawson's going to be really jealous. We've been working on their baseball diamond after the tornadoes for a long time. I can tell you that, that most of the time, I, I've got to stay at 30,000 feet, but my people hear me ask about the park in Dawson Springs every day, and they keep telling me it's FEMA's fault, so I keep calling FEMA and telling them about the park every single day but these are important investments not to be overlooked now investments in where you might be with uh, your kids or, or your grandkids places we make these memories you know i've lost a lot of people over the last two and a half years far more than at any point in my life and it's it's reminded me that life is short our job is to be kind and do good things this is a good thing that we're all doing together so uh, mayor congratulations on on that and i know you all will do a great job with it and my goodness, how about the bluegrass that's already been played today? What talent we've got in Kentucky. You know, what's going on in Ohio County and in Western Kentucky that keeps bringing me back is so exciting. Uh, I want to thank Judge Johnson uh, for everything he's done. I want to thank Charlotte Whitaker for everything that she's done to push this forward. And I know that while she is retiring as AARP president for the state of Kentucky, but she's still going to be at every meeting telling us how to get it done and leading us forward. <laughs> Charlotte's tireless efforts have made a difference for seniors across the Commonwealth. I got to see it in my time as AG and my time as governor. She has been a transformational leader uh, that has brought more to the cause and has ensured that we do better each legislative session, each year in the executive branch. The organization has more than 430,000 members in this state, and they have been there for their membership in the good times and the tough times. They've helped make sure seniors have full access, including adding audio devices at the Bluegrass Museum so that everybody can hear this incredible music. They've been working on building parks, walking trails, and so much more. Everybody in this room ought to be proud about what you've accomplished in AARP or across Kentucky. I think about the last oh, four to eight years that AARP members and volunteers have helped lower prescription drug prices for Kentuckians with diabetes. How about capping for a large portion of Kentuckians the price for insulin? Thank you for that work. You've worked to enhance services so seniors can stay in their communities with the support they need. They shouldn't have to be moved to a different location. Uh, you've worked to expand basic social services, protect seniors from fraud and abuse. Uh, one, of, one of my proudest days as Attorney General is when we created the first senior protection division that that office had ever had in Kentucky. Uh, and I'm proud of how other attorneys general have embraced it. Attorney General Daniel Cameron not only kept the office, but got it passed into state law and it continues today. Uh, that office, if, if run the way that it has been this last several years, can provide a lot of protection to our seniors. Stay on top of scams and, and be there uh, for those ever-involving threats to all 
of our families. Together, we've advocated for retired public employees and public school teachers. We've aided recovery after natural disasters. By serving in this organization, by being a part, you are leaving a legacy that may make it a little bit easier for those that come after you, even a world that's getting ever complex. And we're trying to build on your efforts. We're trying to build on your example at the state level, <laughs> making sure Kentuckians have the resources they need as they age. I was proud to sign Senate Bill 151, which increases support for grandparents and relatives raising children across Kentucky. Now, a couple of years ago, the last statistic was that we have more grandparents per capita raising their grandkids than any other state. And let me say, thank you. When grandparents step up to do that, it's typically out of need. And it's a child that without them might be being raised by someone they don't know. And having that level of love means we ought to come with more support. Each of our kids deserve the very best start in life regardless of what their own family circumstances have been. We've been working to expand access to health care, which I believe is a basic human right. That's why I made good on my promise to relaunch Connect, our state-based health insurance marketplace, and we're going to have record years these next two years. And working with the General Assembly, we fully funded Medicaid and Medicaid expansion. Really important for our office. And I know there's more to be done, that our seniors deserve more. In my budget proposal, I proposed a one-time additional payment or 13th check for our retirees that didn't ultimately get through. But I think what the General Assembly is seeing is that we need to do more without having a cost of living adjustment for people who gave decades of service. Uh, to the Commonwealth and knowing in a world where inflation uh, has been an issue that we should look at the next sessions about how we could potentially doing that. Now a pension is a promise and I will say our pension systems have been fully funded in each of these last budgets and in fact extra dollars from our record revenue surpluses have gone in them. Uh, again working together I can tell you our retirement systems are in the best shape they have been in at least the last two decades. We've also achieved a, a dream in, in helping our seniors that the Commonwealth's had for over a decade, and that's the PACE program. The PACE program uh, helps seniors uh, age where they live, in their own homes. Uh, the ability um, to, to be in that program for all-inclusive care for the elderly. Uh, right now, we have six PACE locations open in the Commonwealth. We opened our first one less than two years ago. We have two more that are coming online. We have PACE representatives working now in 100 of 120 counties, and we know what it means to be able to stay in your own home for as long as possible. We know what that adds to an individual's health. And now these programs being able to provide so many services in one location, that also provides the chance to socialize and so much more is going to be such a great benefit to Kentuckians. In 2023, we provided in-home support to more than 200,000 individuals who are aging or had a disability, and that is a big change from about four years ago. But I tell you, one of the things that I'm most proud of, and these two gentlemen should too, is what's done right over here. So we learned in the pandemic, and should have known before, we had a wait list for seniors who needed food assistance. We had a wait list for people that helped build this commonwealth in this country that just needed a little extra help. You know, the fishes and the loaves are one of the only miracles that are in every book of the gospel. And I think they tell us that we should have enough for everyone. During the pandemic, we were able to step up with federal funds and ensure there was funding for meals for everybody, that there was no wait list. And when we came out of it, the General Assembly stepped up to provide tens of millions of dollars of funding in each and every budget so that I can report to you, we still do not have a wait list for senior meals in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. And I know what's also important to everybody in this room, and I talked about it earlier, is how we leave the Commonwealth uh, for those that are coming, the opportunities that are gonna be there for our kids and our grandkids. And let me tell you, like the Senator said, I've never been more excited for the future of Kentucky. 
And, and I can tell you, it's hard to be optimistic right now and just the pessimism that seems to be hanging over our country. You know, part of it is social media. For everybody who's not on social media, God bless you. I hope to join you fairly soon. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's nothing meaner than comments on Facebook. And if you don't believe me, go read the comments on my Facebook. <laughs> Between that, cable news, you know, there's just a, a lot of negativity out there. But I hope you're seeing some real positivity here in Kentucky. I mean, we are, right, we are right now on our biggest, best economic development win streak in our history. And what a time for it to be coming at. Uh, together, we brought in about $30.6 billion of new private sector investment in us in Kentucky. That is a record for any governor's term, uh, one term or two. Uh, and I call and I tell my dad that just about every single night. <laughs> Uh, what that's meant is about 52,700 new jobs in the last two years have been the best years, the best two years for new wages at over $26 an hour, hour in our average incentivized wages. Uh, they're coming everywhere too. And, and don't you, you look back in the past and, and you hear some good economic development news, but you say, where is it? Well, for the first time that I can remember, jobs are coming to people instead of expecting people to drive or to move to jobs. We've seen it in this county between WPT non-wovens. It keeps expanding and expanding and expanding. Uh, the Western Kentucky uh, Distilling, which is already looking at its next expansions. Neo Industries, the Fordsville Pellet, Kentucky Oak Capital, Dunaway Timber, Infrastructure Precast, Dynamic Fabrication. Judge, that is a lot to be proud of, but there's a lot more coming behind it. Uh, we look at having record low unemployment. Uh, we look at breaking every record in exports each of the last two years. 2022 was our best year ever for tourism. And for that Beaver Dam Amphitheater, happy anniversary. This is a big one. This year, uh, on Thursday, I think we're going to have the new tourism numbers. And let me tell you, our wind streak isn't going to stop. Things are looking better and better because when people want outdoor tourism, uh, in the way that they do right now, there's no better place to come than to Kentucky. We also see that when things are, are going right, when we're providing opportunity, good things start to happen. The last three years have been some of the lowest recidivism rates the Commonwealth has ever seen. That means we are living out our faith of second chances and ensuring that while people are incarcerated or in jail, they're getting the drug treatment services they need. And we're working on good jobs when they come out. That means we're getting families back together, ensuring parents are there for their children, and should be reducing crime in the future as we're providing that solid base for people. I look at what's happening in healthcare, and thank you to our healthcare heroes here in Ohio County. <laughs> and we are seeing expansion of healthcare services uh, all across the board throughout Kentucky. Uh, we're seeing uh, new autism clinics in Eastern Kentucky where people were told the best thing they should do for their child is move. No parent should ever have to hear that. Uh, we're seeing the first hospital built in West Louisville, a community that hasn't had one in 150 years. We're seeing new clinics pop up in all different counties to provide more health care opportunities for everyone that's out there. Uh, working with the General Assembly, we were able to make some changes and open up some programs that help hospitals like yours and the great work they do. Remember, Without those programs, without Medicaid expansion, rural health care doesn't happen. And you should never have to drive a couple hours to see your doctor. It should be right here in your community. And we're grateful for everybody who fights to make that happen. Um, I look at, at things that are happening in Ohio County right now through all these great programs. I think about the 1,700 families that have uh, clean drinking water for the first time or better service because of that cleaner water program. You know, I was in Morton's Gap in Hopkins County for the very first program and got to see June and her mom turn on their faucet for the first time when it wasn't water they'd hauled from elsewhere in Hopkins County. And I will never take that for granted again, seeing the look on their faces, knowing what stable water means to them. It's 2024. We should have stable drinking water to every single one of our people. And we'll keep working to make that happen. Along with that, there's, the, there's what we call the infrastructure of the future that is the infrastructure right now, and that's high-speed internet access. And whether that's for the education of our kids, whether that's for uh, a doctor's appointment that you can do remotely so you can see anybody 
that you need, whether it's for uh, business or entertainment, it is necessary <laughs> everywhere. And I'm proud to say working together, we're connecting 627 homes and businesses in Ohio County that have never had it before, but we've got another $1.1 billion coming down from the federal government that will pair more than match from the private sector. And together, the people in this room are gonna make sure that internet access reaches every home and every business in Kentucky. Uh, uh, like Senator Meredith had talked about, we're also uh, doing so well as a state. We just had one of our best months of general fund revenue in our history. We are now over 20 months of over a billion dollars in general fund coming in. And that's what allows there to be flexibility uh, on tax rates, but it also means that we have dollars for services, for critical projects. Uh, separate dollars come into the road fund, but this General Assembly has allowed us to use some general fund dollars to augment uh, those necessary programs. Uh, being in a place right now with that healthy general fund that we can spend out of means that we can better the lives of our people. Now, I, I said it earlier at, um, at the press conference, when, when I look back on, well, let's see, what do I have? I have another three years, six months, and a couple days. <laughs> so when I look back on, on, on my two terms as governor and my term as AG, I promise you this, I will never count as an accomplishment, or as any statistic I look at, the number of Democrats or Republicans. I won't look at anything red or blue. What I'm gonna look at is have we improved the lives of our people? How many more good jobs do we have out there? How much uh, better care do we have for our seniors in terms of meals and, and programming, health care? Uh, what have we done on the, on the prescription drug side that makes life better? Have we improved that part where our kids can go out and make those incredible memories? Have we left our commonwealth as a better place for all of our families? And my belief is with the position we are in right now that we can lift everybody up and leave no one behind. When we're building prosperity, it's got to come everywhere. It's got to come to people of all ages, and we've got to make sure that we don't get in each other's way in getting there. I don't know in our lifetime that we're going to have another period where we can sprint forward as fast as we are right now to get as much done for our people. So I promise you in those last three years, six months, and a couple days, I'm not going to slow down at all. What we do together over this next period of time could create decades of advancement, prosperity, opportunity uh, for this state. And I'm proud to report that the way people talk about this state has changed a lot over the last couple of years. Now, we are never going to be a flyover state ever again. We're the destination. Now, people are never going to look down their nose at us ever again. And people are never going to make fun of our accents ever again. <laughs> I mean, you just look at being number three in per capita economic development in the country last year. Number two the year before. Uh, we just had site selection put out a Prosperity Cup ranking. States bring in prosperity to their people. There's no per capita. We gotta go up against all the big states. We were number eight in the entire country and how their rankings are and what they see coming. Uh, so I hope uh, that you're excited and that we can push through all the negativity that's out there uh, because we deserve a better future and we deserve one where all this constant back and forth stops. I don't know about you, but I'm exhausted with the constant back and forth with everything out there being viewed as political, and I'd like to think right now in Kentucky, we're showing the rest of the country the way. Let me give you one example. Um, we just welcomed home a number of members of our National Guard. And after just celebrating Memorial Day, I was taken back to the attack on our country, the attack on Tower 22 in Jordan in January. What most people didn't know when that attack happened, but I did, is that the Kentucky National Guard was running Tower 22. That drone attack killed three service members from Georgia. We're lucky that we didn't lose any Kentuckians. We had some minor injuries, but, but we mourn with those in Georgia. After that happened, I turned on cable news. One of the first things I saw was somebody that's supposed to be in a big position in, in Washington, uh, not talking about those we'd lost, not talking about how our country had been attacked, but using it to attack somebody from a different party. That is not who we are as Americans. That's not who we are as people. And I think this is our chance to be the example that we are better than so much of what we see out there in our country or up in Washington these days. Now, 
People in this room helped raise us right. And as we move forward, you might have to remind some of us on how we do that. Uh, this is an inflection point, I believe. You know, in our history, certainly in my lifetime. I know we've been through some tough moments in this country. This one, I worry, is about one from within. But I believe what we're showing right here in Kentucky, the way we've been able to work together, no matter how difficult the battles have been in the past, is something truly exciting and something we ought to be really proud of. Uh, so as we move forward, I look forward to coming back. And back again and back again because you all have that much going on. And uh, we will continue to fight for more opportunities right here, more jobs in this county and across western Kentucky. Uh, so uh, be watching us because uh, I think you're going to hear some really good news for this area really, really soon. And we're going to keep pushing to create that better commonwealth for everyone. God bless.